I already made a video about YouTube subscription and engagement campaigns. You can check it out at the top of the screen. This video was still relevant, but certain campaign goals have been moving from video campaigns into demand gen campaigns. And with this, certain features from those campaigns have also moved over to demand gen. You can still create a YouTube subscription and engagement campaign, but if you want to test out demand gen throughout this transition or you're brand new to demand gen in general, I'm going to show you how to create a demand gen campaign that is going to be focused on YouTube subscriptions. Now, one would assume when I'm starting this video, we would just go ahead and create a new demand gen campaign, but that's not the case. In order to track YouTube subscriptions as a goal, you need to make sure that you have a YouTube channel integrated or synced with your Google ads account. And I'm going to show you how to do it just in case you're new to this process. First, go to tools. You don't even have to click on it. Just hover over it and then click on data manager. Here we will see that we're defaulted to the connected products tab. Michelle and I already have it synced here, but if you haven't done so yet, most likely you can just scroll down to featured products and you would find it right here. Or you can just go up to the blue connect product button. You click on it and then you would just search for YouTube, but it's pretty simple. This process is a lot easier if you're an admin on both the Google Ads account and the YouTube channel. If you're on the agency side and you don't own the YouTube channel for a client account, find out from the client one of the email addresses who's an admin on the YouTube channel because you'll be able to paste in that email address and request access to sync these two accounts together. Once this is in place, you'll be able to import the YouTube channel metrics and engagement goals within the Google Ads account, but then that also gives you access to go into the shared library and audience manager and start building out some YouTube audiences. Okay, now you have your YouTube channel linked with your Google Ads account. Now we can go creating a new campaign. So let's head back to campaigns and then let's create a new campaign. Next, choose create a campaign without guidance, scrolling down, and then we want demand gen. Scrolling down again, these are other goals that we can track, but don't worry, we'll see more on the next screen. So let's click continue. First, go ahead and name your campaign. You can see as we scroll down to campaign goal, there we see the new YouTube engagements campaign goal. Moving down further, you see the option for a target cost per action. My recommendation would be to leave it as is. So it's going to start off with maximize conversions. See how this new demand gen campaign goal works first. Depending on the volume that you get, it could take a couple weeks, could take a month. Hard to say without seeing your account. But first, find a steady average of what a cost per conversion is going to be for this type of campaign. Then, if you find a specific average, you can switch it to a TCPA bid strategy and then enter your amount here. Now, to clarify with this campaign goal, a conversion is counted when someone either viewed your video ad, not just the impression, they actually have to click and view on it, or they click on any of your site link extensions, your call to action extensions, and then they eventually subscribe to the YouTube channel that is linked to the Google Ads account. That's exactly why I started off the video stressing that it's important. One more thing, let me open up another tab. I'm in the goal section over here under summary, scrolling down under engagement. Here we see YouTube channel subscriptions. So this will happen automatically once you sync the two channels. But if I click on it, notice that it defaults to a 30 day click through conversion window. You do have the option to change the click through conversion window. Just know that if you click custom, it's going to go in days and 30 days is the max anyway. But a conversion from this new demand gen campaign goal will only count if they subscribed within this click through conversion window. So it's quite possible someone can view your ads. And then if they subscribe 31 days after that action, it's not going to show up as a goal within the campaign. So definitely keep that in mind. You may want to go into your YouTube analytics. It's analytics.youtube.com for your channel and really monitor any overall upticks in conversions from the past 30 days or so. It may take a little bit longer for that attribution to occur. If you're seeing a bigger noticeable boost and only the really change you've done with your YouTube channel is just promote it with a new demand gen campaign, you may realize you're getting more subscriptions from this effort that can actually be reported in Google ads. But I'm pretending this is new. I'm going to leave it as maximized conversions for now. Go to budgets and ad schedule. You can have a daily or a lifetime campaign budget. Here we see location and language. This is one of the benefits I think of demand gen is location and language is controlled at the ad group level by default instead of the campaign level, but you can toggle it to campaign level if you want. Here are devices. I still recommend with video campaigns. It's very hard to subscribe to a YouTube channel on a TV. So I'm still going to turn it off here. There's ad schedule, URL options. I'm good with everything here. Going to the first ad group, change your name, choose your location, choose your languages, and then you can choose which channels you would want this ad group to serve on. 
It's gonna to default to all channels. Google Display is still turned off, but you have the option to choose. Let's say in our case, Michelle and I really don't create vertical video for shorts. So if I know I don't have the video creative that can really serve this platform, I might wanna turn this off. And Google Display and Video Partners, well, we know how that works. So I'm gonna turn that off as well. Just understand you have the options here. And this is one of the things I think DemandGen does better than a standard video campaign. Next, go ahead and add your audience. Michelle and I have already created one. You can see these are people who have viewed any video. And like I said, once you sync up your YouTube channel with Google Ads, you can create audiences. So we've created an audience off of channel subscribers and we use it as an exclusion in our audience that we're building. Because if the goal of this campaign is to get more YouTube subscribers, I want to make sure my YouTube subscribers aren't seeing these ads. I want to get new subscribers. I can create a different campaign to remarket in front of my current subscribers. But build whichever audience you want. And then, as always, we're going to turn off optimized targeting. This is pretty much like similar audiences or expanded targeting. In my opinion, it's easier to test out a different audience in a different ad group than expand upon a current one. I chose this specific targeting for a reason. I want to stick to it. If I have a different idea, I'll create a new audience. All right, but then you can go to your ad. And of course, this is YouTube. So video ads are the only option. Go ahead and name it. And then you see final URL. Now you may be thinking, hold up, Joe. I thought the goal here was subscriptions. We'll see in the ad preview. It still is, but users will also have the option to go to your website. It's up to you if you want to send them to the website or as I paste in something here, maybe you want to send them straight to the channel page. Google will still know that they clicked on an ad element. They will know that they watched the ad. Google will still know that they subscribed to the channel. This might be a benefit to use as your final URL. It's still sending traffic to your site. Yes, it's your Google owned site, but it's still yours. Now this is a newer feature here and it's optional. I haven't seen what it actually looks like yet since this announcement. I only saw this announcement like a day or two ago, but this is essentially letting Google use screenshots or certain snapshot elements of your landing page within the ad creative. That's why they're stressing it's very important that you own all the content and the images on those pages. You should anyway, but in my case, since I plan on using my YouTube channel, I'll leave it on. All right, so next, go ahead, add up to five videos that are really relevant to the audience that you're targeting within your ad group settings. Okay, you can add up to five. Ignore our examples, I'm just posting what we have just to keep on moving. But notice at the ad level, you can also choose where you want ads to show. I already turned off shorts in the ad group setting. However, maybe you only wanna show certain videos on shorts. Then you would leave it on within your campaign settings and then just turn it off for the individual videos that it applies to. Another good feature about video campaigns with DemandGen. Then go ahead and add your logo and then here's video enhancements. These are optional, you can turn them off. In this case, you're letting Google crop your videos, in our case, from the horizontal video to vertical or square. I've seen it look funky a few times. I'm gonna turn it off or make your video shorter. These are our demo videos, so they're gonna be longer, but I can turn it off because maybe I would only wanna show longer form content in feed where people are definitely gonna be watching or searching for this type of content. Maybe that's more valuable. Just understand what you're showing, where it's gonna be shown and who you're showing it to. That's gonna determine how you wanna mess with these settings. And then going down, you have five headlines, up to five long headlines. I'm just gonna add something here. Please add more options. I would never say this. And here we see our call to action. I'm gonna leave it as automated because it doesn't make sense if you're trying to get more subscriptions to book now, donate now, download. No, leave it as is. Because here we see users have the option to watch. When they send to the video watch page, there will be multiple ways a user can subscribe once they get to your video watch page. Or either they're familiar with your brand a little bit, or it's just flat out exactly what they need. We see the option they could subscribe from the ad directly. So again, leave it as automated. Add in your business name. Here are the optional site links that you can add up to four or more. Click go to review. Looks good. I'm going to launch the campaign. Now within this setting, just go to campaigns. I'm going to stick with this new one that I created. Yes, you get all the columns that you would want to look at. Here's your conversions. So subscriptions will show up here. You can always go to segment, conversions, segment by the conversion action. And once you do, you'll be able to see which of your conversions were either on the website versus actual YouTube subscriptions, which was the goal of the campaign. Now, besides all this, I'd modify my columns. Well, I've done it already, but notice that you can modify your columns. I have a save set here. Definitely look at the individual view rates by the placement options. This may give you a better understanding of what you may want to change either at the ad level or within your campaign settings, but then also look at your earned metrics. Of course, subscribers are the main goal, 
but after users have watched your video, are they watching other videos at least? Liking your videos, sharing it, adding other videos to a playlist? I consider those important engagement actions as well. Because yes, subscribers are the goal, but this is still a YouTube engagement campaign. Not every single person who's going to see it is going to subscribe right away. What other actions are they performing? Because remember, anyone who performs any of these actions, viewing, liking, sharing, adding to a playlist, or even just visiting your YouTube channel, you can create remarketing audiences from those actions and engagements. And then maybe you just need to hit them up with some different remarketing instead, within a demand gen campaign, of course, to get them back and subscribe. And that's how easy it is to get a demand gen YouTube subscription campaign up and running. Remember, make sure the right YouTube channel is integrated with your Google Ads account. Double check that the conversion data is flowing in. Make sure that your YouTube subscription goal is a primary conversion action. And be aware about the different placements and the ad creative that may be needed to see success in this type of campaign. If you have any other questions on using video within demand gen or just video campaigns in general, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.